any drafts, but I like the fact that it's got some unique pulls to it. There's the Rona. Yep. Rona so this in. is uh, a very strong draft from Cloud9. This is what we've seen them run already. Yep. Uh, and so they're just saying, hey, we've made this work before. We're going to do the same thing again. And one of the great things about this Rona pick as well is they've already banned away Fortress, right? So you don't have as much initial removal of that lifestyle, that healing, but Vox is going to be the final pick. This is a very aggressive composition coming out from Gangstars. But looking at these two drafts as we head towards the third game in this grand final, how are we feeling about this one? Oscar right now, but we're on to the fold. We are on to the fold for match three in this final series. A scoundrel! If Cloud9 can take this game, they are going to be our first unified champions. I can't imagine the emotions going through their minds right now. How must Old School and I Love Joseph be feeling to be this close from confirming themselves as some of the best players in the world after so much heartbreak over the years? Finally being so close to securing their championship. They start off with and mean as they go start to go on. It's early aggression from C9 again. Now this is one thing that I think Rek does almost better than anybody. Let's see if he can steal one of these camps away. He does try to do it with the afterburn, but he's holding these boots. And if he can get in there, he can always get out with those boots. He's not going to be able to steal away that Elder Train or the mid. C9 doing a good job to take an early advantage on this map. Yeah, and they weren't able to push that lane in too hard, so Old School won't be punished to a mega extent. Okay, Bizzle is here to back up his lane partner as well. Remember, one of the remedies or one of the major um, win conditions that we've seen C9 achieve has been when Old School has been facilitated. Old School has been the guy getting ahead. Absolutely. And they have really helped him achieve maximum potential. But I Love Joseph has been on fire this entire series. Gangstars are now moving to put pressure onto I Love Joseph here. Won't be too hard, though. Yeah, they're going to do their best. They take away the backs. They're going to get a little region, but a lot of damage coming out. Boots used by Rek to get himself into a better position. Araki drops down. Pulse out here. Sonic zooms forward. They're on to I Love jo uh, Joseph here. Old School trading with Rek and Xenotech out to the west side of this fight. Can they take Rek down? He's burning from that gift of fire. I don't know if they're going to get the chase because Araki is there as well. A nice scout trap giving the, them the vision they need. Now, Xenotech... You're caught in a bad place here, my friend. Twirly death, it's just a matter of time. Tries to get the back, but he goes down. Even the back yeah, goes the way of C9. First blood here, two minutes in to Cloud9. But Gangstars should be able to return with getting this mid tree on as well, wrecked. And everybody dancing around. They did get a couple of back camps also, but first blood worth so much gold at this point in time too. I tell you, these Elo Trains, Wreck almost going down to that yeah, Elder Train, and so that, that is uh, such a dangerous situation. Now, Xenotech has been phenomenal through this whole championship on the costume. I, I think he, he caught a lot of people by surprise. Can he execute on it here? Well, he's had a good start, but obviously giving up first blood wasn't ideal. Got a couple of back camps here, but if you're looking for a combination to shut down early aggression from the Koshka, you pick the ultimate weapon power duelist, Rona. I always feel like Koshka is kind of the ultimate melee CP duelist. Rona uh -huh. is the ultimate melee weapon power duelist, in my opinion. So they kind of go toe-to-toe -to -toe in that respect. And especially when you added the shielding and the movement speed, Rona suffers from one thing, mobility after using from into the fray. Arden remedies that. That's all that she needs to give her the sort of success to win. So I really like the way that C9 have brought that combo into this final game, or potentially their final game of the series. <laughs> potentially, exactly, Scoundrel. And, and you know, one of the things that uh, is going to do so well in Cloud9's composition is going to be countered out by an item that Iraqi Zoro is now building up. Poison Ship is yeah. going to be a great item for him to pick up here, and a very smart choice. Of course, we would expect Iraqi to do it, and he's executing here. The one thing that Cloud9 is suffering from in this draft is that they only have a limited ways to chase down Iraqi Zoro easily. Once into the fray and Gauntlet have been used, that's pretty much it. So if Iraqi Zoro can get past that, if Iraqi Zoro can get peeled by Wrecked past that point, right. suddenly Gangstars have the kiting potential. It's something that we saw C9 execute on last game, but Gangstars have brought it out in this game with Iraqi Zoro probably going to remain fairly safe unless obviously C9 are making massive engages and he can't get through that gauntlet wall or gets caught out by uh, and into the fray very early on. So there is that potential for Gangstars here. The problem is that Xenotech generally li likes to be aggressive on a, on a Koshka. That's kind of how Koshka is aimed to be played. When you're trying to peel with the Koshka, it doesn't really work so much. So it's kind of a blend of styles from the Gangstars composition. A blend of styles. Xenotech, he's going to go ahead and buff up his auto attack. So that's really death. Joseph jumping forward. He's Vanguard up. That is, is so scary. I mean, if, if you see most Ronas in a rank queue buffed up with a Vanguard jumping at you, it's one thing. But to see Joseph buffed up and jumping at you is terrifying here. 
So the one thing I don't want to see Gangstars do this game, despite the fact that I think unless they get ahead, they will do it, is try to make the engage onto C9, because that'll play right into the Adagio, that'll play right into the Rona as well. Here we go. Into the fray, Wrecked is immediately there with the afterburn, but they turn it right around onto him. You see those mortal wound come out. Uh, very good job, Joseph, keeping the damage out, and uh, the moment that Wrecked goes in, it's just reverse aggression. They're it's, so fast. Exactly, the counter engage when if Gangstars are the ones to engage is so big. That's why I want to see Gangstars potentially allow C9 to do the engaging, and then play around in Raki Zoro on this Vox and try and kite it out. If they make the move and go aggressive with Xeno and, and Wreck, they are giving C9 an easy time with this Rona and this Adagio, who are, despite into the fray for Rona, fairly low mobility otherwise, right? Mm -hmm. Obviously, Gabe on the Arden will actually sort of accentuate that. But realistically, I think Xeno, uh, uh, Gangstars can play around Xeno, uh, Iraqi Zoro this game. I think they can actually play the kite game and try and bring C9 to them. That's maybe where I think their win condition lies here. I think it's very interesting to see Iraqi's build thus far. He, he thinks he does not need the boots, so he's not going to go for that. Rex, he moves forward. He finds old school, knocks him back, but a nice Vanguard coming out with a fountain keeps him alive. Xeno Tech really wanted that kill. They were so close to finding it. And thus is the power of Arden. Humanist is the power so of good right now. Garden is an excellent captain at keeping those carries safe. Not Absolutely. only do you provide that shield or a fortified health for him, and obviously then give it the movement speed, which allows him to get at those sticky situations even more readily. Wrecked, actually, interesting tidbit. When we talked to Wrecked about his captain choices, he thought Arden was terrible. To get schooled by an Arden in potentially a championship game is pretty huge. Yeah, well, maybe, maybe he goes, goes back to the drawing board on that one. Uh, obviously, Wrecked able to accomplish so much with so many of these captains. Arden maybe not one that he's preferring right now, but something that Gabe Vizzle has found success on here. And we see Gabe Vizzle level 5. As we get closer and closer to him hitting that level 6, he's going to get that gauntlet. And when that comes out, if there aren't reflex blocks ready to go and you're caught inside that gauntlet, it, it's lights out. Especially for Iraqi Zoro. He is the key member that needs a reflex block more than any one here. He is the key, I think, to this Gangstars lineup because obviously Xenotech hasn't found the early aggression needed. Now you have to think about where this game is going to transition to, and I definitely think Iraqi Zoro will be the key. C9 probably going to be wanting to send I Love Joseph in, get a Gift of Fire onto him, and then obviously use the Agent of Wrath as well to deal as much damage to Iraqi Zoro in a short space of time. That's what Gangstars need to avoid. All right, this could be the fight that we're looking for. Wait for it's going to come through with the silence out. I mean, Captain Frizzy coming through, but Old School pulls up for the verse. It's going to connect. Game Fizzle's dropping very low. He stays alive through it. They've turned onto Araki. They found the kill. Xenotech down as well. And with this kill on direct, that's going to be a double kill for Old School. And the ace for Cloud9. Another ace. And it's exactly as we said. If Gangstars make the easy work for C9, they get the counter engage. You play right into the Gift of Fire hitting multiple members. That is not what you want to do against this C9 composition, Humanist. Let's have a look at the replay. Okay, here we go. Xenotech goes in. Suddenly, look, Old School has already done work with the Gift of Fire. You played exactly into the Red Mist. C9 had to do nothing. C9 didn't need to use Into the Fray until the end of the fight. They didn't need to use any of their uh, gauntlets or anything like that to try and force the engage. It obviously gave us it wasn't level <laughs> six yet, but you did, yeah. they, you did the easy work for C9 there. Exactly how C9 did against Gangstars last game. Gangstars just allow C9 to come to them, but unfortunately, if you give C9 the advantage in the early game, C9 will just win through pressure on global objectives, and then they'll force things like Goldmine and force Gangstars to make those moves. So, you know, it's, it's a difficult situation for Gangstars to be in right now. You know, one of the things I think, as uh, Atlas Pauldron picked up here for Gabe Vizzle, I, one of the things I think he does best, obviously, uh, not only with his activatables, but his item choices. He picked up a Dragon Blood contract, and this is an, an, an early pickup, but something that he decides he needs for his team. Just giving them a, that extra little bit stick when they go ahead and proc off that Dragon Blood contract. I really like it. Absolutely. Obviously, it gives them great single target focus. Do you know what target they want to focus? Oh, no. Iraqi Zoro. <laughs> <laughs> you tell me, you tell me. <laughs> if they can get that damage onto Iraqi Zoro, it's huge. Actually, wow, here we go. Wait for it. It's going to be coming through Iraqi, trying to kite back. Crystal Sentry going to try to get it with him as the gauntlet is down into the fray. Over the top side of that as he starts to spin with redness. Xenotic dropping low, and Xeno is down. It looks like Crystal Sentry should be falling as well. Rex wants to keep it alive, but he just can't do it. You've got to feel for Xenotech in these situations, Humanist. He has had such a stellar performance, the performance of his career throughout this weekend. And right, right when it counts, has been under the thumb of C9. Wrecked going trying in. Trying to make the play just a little too late. He leaves himself out on an island here and should 
uh, it should be able to chase him down. It felt like they should. Cloud9 making the smart decision. They're going to let it go. They have uh, better things to do on this map right now. Yeah, Gabe Bizzle also, like we said, you, you said he picked up the Atlas Pauldrons. It's pretty decent against Koshka as well because she does sometimes rely on basic attacks to get that damage down, especially with the Twirly Dead. But obviously, really good against Iraqi Zoro, who is going the double sustain build, by the way. Double sustain build designed for kiting. Not really designed to do anything else. You can't play the old style of Vox here, where you build a couple of breaking point stacks, then suddenly Sonic zoom onto the target. Oh, the good old days. The good old days of breaking point double tyrants, Monocle. This is a build specifically designed to kite as much as possible to out-sustain your opponents. Maybe gangstars have realized that this should be their win condition here with this particular pickup. Feels like a bit of a conundrum that they might find themselves in if they're trying to kite back, but you've got a Yomi Cat and Frenzy in onto a target, locking Xeno in place oftentimes. And we saw him just get melted in that last engagement. Gabe Old school. Hey, he's infused up with Joseph here. Very important. Yeah, yeah they're going to try and utilize this spike to pick off something like, uh, you know, a team fight, another turret. Obviously, with this tier 2 turret having taken some damage already, this should be an area that C9 look to focus to make these infusions worth it. C9 pushing their advantage as they apply pressure down the lane. Wrecked, dropping those charms. He loves it. He does it more than anybody here. Now, Joseph is going to drop onto this turret, getting very good damage out. This is the objective they want. Into the fray. He jumps out. He's into the bonus rift with a red miss. And Gabe Vizzle tanking for his team. He self fountains there, but keeping himself alive, he still has this gauntlet, which is a huge tool for his team. Hey, it looks like Wrecked might be trying to bait as well. He still has the fountain available to him. He's going to use that life spring when out of combat to regenerate as much health as possible. That is a big item available here for Gangstars. Wrecked Knocks Gabe Thistle back to the Redness Den. Turret's gonna drop. They're taking a lot of damage. Xeno's down. They're looking for more. Wreck is down as well in the gauntlet. Gabe Thistle staying alive. Iraqi trying to stand his ground. The first is gonna come out. They do get one, but they're going to lose the Vox in the end. And an ace here for Cloud9. Up 8-1 to one, and now onto this choke point turret. Iraqi with no reflex block. Locked in there with the C9 roster. And that is excellent use of those infusions. Two turrets. Already more gold than they have spent on infusions in their favor. Gonna get a replay coming up. Let's have a look exactly what happens here. Wrecked does have the fountain. He hasn't been super awesome with those um, afterburns right now, but you know, you Rona in the middle of your fight. If you get Rona into the position that she wants to be without her having to do it, she's just gonna red mist and just decimate your opponent. Uh, thank you very much. Exactly. She she just absolutely decimated there. I love Joseph pops the red mist and suddenly everybody on the roster of Gangstars dies. And actually you've got to look at the itemization for Gangstars right now. Very little defense. You can't afford to build that much defense when you're behind because you have to rely on your positioning or errors from the enemy to get you back into the game. If you build defense now, you just won't have the damage to compete with C9. But the problem is, if anybody gets into range of Rona, they're probably going to die. No real armor or no real armor to speak of there for the carries on C9, especially for Koshka, who is going to be in range of Rona. Xenotech's going to get melted. I mean, the, the items are starting to come together for Gangstars while they are on the back foot here. That's when uh, a wild animal is most dangerous. Let's see what Xenotech, Rex, and Araki can do. Araki with a fresh infusion. He does have three offensive items complete here as we're moving into the 13 minute mark of this game. Rek taking the backs with his team. We see C9 closing down on them. I really like what Iraqi has done here. Obviously investing so heavily into offense because I think the win condition is for Gangstars. Getting Iraqi stacked in a team fight, able to kite, and then turn around because the mobility has gone from C9. Gabe Bizzle should be working towards a war, pair of war treads now. That's going to make it okay. harder for Gangstars to kite. I think right now C9 is staring down a very, very close game in which they end up picking up the championship point here. Oh, tough, tough, tough situations. Crystal Sentry will be Crystal going down. Sentry. Xenotech even bought his own minion candy. A little bit uh, off target with that gauntlet there. And Gabe Vizzle will be forgiven as he does land most of those. But C9, they're going to be missing uh, a big tool for themselves. About 90 second cooldown there on that one. But Gangstars don't want to engage, remember, so they can't really punish the, the Gauntlet use because obviously you don't want to jump straight into I Love Joseph, who is sitting on a lot of items right now. That's a lot for Rona. She's already got the Aegis. She's got a coat of plates working towards the breaking point. She's pretty scary at this point in time. Araki Zoro oversteps a little bit. Yeah, Sonic zoom backwards. Wrecked is into the middle of this one. Wrecked taking a lot of damage. That spin does come out. And they're locked in. Xenotech moves in, trying to get the damage, abusing the move speed that he currently has with the fountains out. They have no more healing. They're down. Excalibur. They're dropping Xenotech back to the healing platform so close from having the ace happen right in their base. 
And look at the defensive itemization on both Old School and Joseph. Suddenly, Xenotech is almost irrelevant in these fights. Steps there, it's like a real cat now, pouring at them, not really <laughs> doing the damage necessary. C9 have played exemplary this entire series. They are the deserved winners. Can they close out this final game? Gangstars have got so much work to do to put themselves into a position where they can even compete at this level where C9 have put the game at. It's going to be so difficult here. Ooh, C9 is just a nice edge. One more just uh, one more ace near near the the base here for Gangstars. It's going to be game over. Yeah. Right. You cannot afford to make one mistake right now if you're Gangstars. And what pressure does that put on you? And look at the look at what's happened right now. C9 know that if they bring Gangstars to them, that is exactly the kind of situation they want to fight in. And they're going to do it by starting up Kraken. And Gangstars might not have a choice here. They might have to go for a hero steal. I, I don't know if they can even risk fighting this right now. But if they let it go, they lose as well. It is a lose-lose situation. Wrecked is making a hero Wrecked play. Wrecked has to do it. Wrecked, when the pressure's on, oh, and he's not even going to pull the trigger. Wrecked is back? I mean, you see C9 here. Uh, 0.22 Kraken captures per match. Not too many, but I mean, obviously enough. I mean, that's a crazy statistic. <laughs> Crazy for the wrong reason. Yeah, I, I don't know if that makes sense, really. <laughs> I don't need, I'm just going to ignore that, mate. <laughs> <laughs> Kraken barreling down the lane here, Humanist. We could be moments away for crowning. You have to fight now. Gangstars know it. They pull the trigger. They go in. They're going to cancel off that gauntlet. Doing a very good job. It's way forward going to oh, come oh, through. Oh, Connect. Oh. Huge stuns here. Old school trying to find the damage. Gabe Fizzle doing a good job to keep his team alive. And I love Joseph. Melting targets. He jumps into the fray, Iraqi Zoro, Sonic zoom backwards, he's on the target, 349 damage, he's down, Gangstars are falling, Cloud9 are doing it, Cloud9 come in, only one turret remaining, there's nothing, Xenotech against the world, and Xenotech knows he can't do it, this is the game, this is Cloud9, 3-0 up, they are going to be your first unified champions here, how about a round of applause for Cloud9? Everybody had questions. They have answered with astounding performance. Look at the emotion on their face, Humanist. This is the culmination of everything they have worked for, everything they were put together to achieve. Some of the best players in North America, some of the best players in the world. It is the deserved reward for everybody on that Cloud9 roster. They have outplayed their opponents left right and center Woo. and deserve to take the crown of the first unified Western Live Championships. And I cannot believe the fashion that they did it. This was a whitewash for Cloud9. Uh, absolutely insane performance here. I mean, Cloud9 coming in today, I heard more people saying that they thought Team Solo Mid would be going through. Cloud9 says,